Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We magnify you, Lord. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout out to God with the voice of triumph. We thank you, God, that we are moving. We thank you for the brooding. We thank you for the presence. We thank you for the fire. We thank you for the fresh wind, the fresh manna, the fresh bread, the fresh flow. Hey, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's hard, but I'm trying to land this plane, Tony. As best as you can, try to work back to your seats as best as you can, as best as you can. Bless God. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Hope Christian Church, to one and all those of us who are in here and those watching us online. And I know this person's been waiting for a minute, so I'll pass the service over to you, Pastor David. Sir, the floor is yours. <laughs> Praise. Praise the Lord, Prophet Ricardo Button. You know, when you've been singing that worship song over there, everyone on the stage said they want to get into the water ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in with Crystal here. Praise God. We've been over here worshiping and praising the Lord right along with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we have Crystal Coleman here today who's going to be water baptized, and we understand that is one of the next steps that we take after salvation or even years later after salvation, but it's one of the process steps that the Lord allows us to identify with Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection according to Romans 6 and Colossians 2. So praise God. Crystal has a great testimony and we'd like to share a little bit about that, what brought her here today to be water baptized. And uh, so if we can share a little bit about this, of course, she came back to the church in 2019. But before she came back here, she had been with us at Boston Way back around 2005, dealing with some offenses and some things in the church. It led you into the occult or new age and witchcraft. So share a little bit about what happened to your life when you left the church. Okay, well, um, I got offended by someone, and because I wasn't connected with people in the church, I just left. I didn't really talk to anyone. Um, during the time when I left, I got into all kinds of things, um, psychic readings, Reiki, um, just numerology, astrology, you name it. I got into a lot of different stuff. I opened a lot of doors, crystals, um, horoscopes, all that. Um, when I opened these doors, I started having um, delusions, maybe schiz not schizophrenia, but I started hearing things. Um, it was really bad to the point I thought the in my apartment, I thought the pe people above me were talking through my apartment to the people on the left and the right of me. Um, I saw things um, that weren't there, and um, a lot of things were going on. In, in the in the spirit world, so so you were experiencing all these demonic activities in your life, and then you said the Lord spoke to you. Yeah. So what happened one day? I decided I wanted to increase my psychic abilities because I wanted to make money as a psychic. So I felt myself being given demonic power, and there was one moment I knew I could have anything I wanted. Literally, I could have anything I wanted. I knew it, um, and I was also offered a position. Um, within the, I guess, the witchcraft community. And um, I, I said, okay, I was communicating with some like orb, uh, some spirit. And just when I had the thought, witchcraft isn't so bad, I felt like I was at the edge of the cliff about to tip over. I said, witchcraft isn't so bad because I was doing witchcraft, new age is witchcraft, but I didn't see it that way. So at this particular moment, I decided I was going to go into full-blown witchcraft. I had a visitation from God Praise himself. God. He came into my apartment, and I was like, okay, that's God. That's God. I know God. I was raised in the church. I know God. This is the presence of God. And yeah. what I thought was God really wasn't. So I said, okay, this is God. This is God. So if you're God, who, who is this? Who is this I've been talking to? Yeah. So God had me renounce everything over the next couple of days. Um, I said, oh, well, God, I got to find a church. He said, hope. I said, but God, wait a minute. He said, hope. 
I said, but God, what about hope? So, <laughs> so I, I came back to church. I had gotten in. Uh, I knew of hope through Elder Shaq, and I came back. Pastor Dave, Elder Dorothy came to my house. They prayed with me. So, so, so we're going to say there. So, there's a, almost 15 years of you being away from the church, practicing a cold and witchcraft, a new age, and uh, so we got the word. Even though you had been been praying for deliverance, we got the word to go visit you at your apartment, Elder Dorothy and myself, and we went the first time and we said, we began to break demonic strongholds over your life and we gave you some homework assignments. Yeah, they made me get rid of my TV because, like, cause like so a guy had gave me the TV and, you know, apparently there was a soul tie that needed to be broken. So, um, so, so you got rid of that. You got rid of a lot of things. You started cleaning. We came back. A lot of, I got rid of a lot of things. I thought I had gotten rid of everything. You really need to do homework when people give you homework. Like, do it to the best of your ability because I was still going through things. So yeah, Right. So we came back a second week for more cleanup. We came back a third week. We kept giving you homework, and you began to really break down and say, okay, I'm trusting what uh, we're telling you to do, and you got cleaned up, and then you came back here for a fourth week in counseling and schedule and prayer. Of course, we're breaking demonic strongholds over your life, and God is beginning to set you free. Yeah. Um, and to, a greater to a greater degree I than you had it, it took <laughs> It took yeah. a couple of years, but... Uh, a few years, yes. Um, so I came back, I got, I went through deliverance, and I got um, hooked up with a life net group with uh, Deacon Angela Ward, who has really, prayed like, that. prayed me through a lot of stuff. Yes. A and, amen. And everyone here has, like, had a part in, everyone here has had a part in me being um, where I am today. Praise God. Well, what a tremendous testimony. You're believing God for greater results and a great future in your life. Praise God. So thank you, Crystal. Crystal Coleman, we're so glad to have you here today. It's a miracle day for her. Total deliverance. And so we, hallelujah, you got, we got the crowd here rooting, crowd back here. Praise God. Praise God. Folks, we've been worshiping with you. We, we had the stage full. We uh, danced around. We've come back. And now, praise God, they were going to get in the tank with Crystal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Minister Tory, we're going to baptize Crystal Coleman in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving honor to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Crystal Coleman, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving honor to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, 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 Woo! hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You met Jesus in the water. Praise God. He did spiritual surgery on her heart. According to Colossians 2, cut out the old stony heart, left the old nature, the sin at the bottom of this watery grave. She's come out in the power of the resurrection. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship here over in the chapel. Praise God. We're going to continue, and we turn it back to you, Prophet Ricardo. God bless you here at Hope Christian Church. Hallelujah. Praise God for that one more time. Yeah. Great to see people getting baptized and getting touched and getting changed. And by the way, if you're here, you actually want to get baptized. Go ahead and meet Pastor David after service, all right? Now, you can sign up for baptism by going to our website directly, but you're always going to meet Pastor David. So since he's here and you're here, please just go over and meet Pastor David. He's very social. He loves people. So hug his neck, you know, shake his hand, trade numbers. Uh, you know, he would love to interact with you, all right? So please make sure that you do that. But again, you're going to have to go to the website to go ahead and get everything done and put in order. So we thank God for that. So get baptized. It's very important. It's a part of the Christian walks, part of the Christian life. You should get baptized, all right? But once again, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hope Christian Church. At Hope Christian Church, we are turning hearts to God and one another, developing people and advancing God's kingdom. Turn, develop, advance. Turn, develop, advance. That's what we do here at Hope Christian Church. If this is your first Sunday with us, go ahead and raise your hand. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to notify, uh, acknowledge you. Anybody, anybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. See people in four, several people in four. Anybody in two and one? All right. I see you. I see you. There you go. Hey, welcome to Hope Christian Church. So if you could do us a favor, if you can go ahead and fill out that rectangular card that you see in front of you, it's a, it's a blue uh, communication card. It should be in the card holder in front of you. So you should, let me see where I have this since I've never seen it remember. 
where I have it. Bam! So, yeah, if you can go ahead and fill out this information on this card. And before you leave, go ahead and turn it into our guest care services desk. Our guest care services desk will be on your right-hand side when you're going out of the main entrance and exit, all right? So go ahead and uh, go over there. You will receive a gift on behalf of our very own pastor and apostle, Apostle uh, Michelle Jackson. So it is a, it's a no-strings-attached gift, but you got to fill out the card to get it, all right? So please make sure that you do that. Those of you who are watching us online, Thank you so much for being a part of our service as well. We pray you sense and experience the presence of God and you worship with us at all the entire time, especially when it comes to the word that's coming up. So we're looking forward to that. Sorry, you cannot get the gift. You have to be in the building to do so. Sorry. But we still have a link in the chat right now for you to click on and fill out all the particulars. We would love to reach out to you on behalf of the leadership team here. So please make sure that you do that. Follow us on all of your social media platforms, all, all of our social media platforms at Grow with hope. Grow with hope. So please make sure that you do that. And share today's service on your timeline if you wouldn't mind. All right, it's time to uh, change to a time of generosity. Praise God. Yeah. We love to give. So that's one of the things that we do here at Hope Christian Church. Giving is one of our core values. That's what we do. It's not just in finances, but it's in our time and our talent and our treasure. Like all the several volunteers coming up here, you know, doing things from the ushers to the greeters to the cameramen to, to audio in different areas. The, 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 just too many areas to name. So please make sure that you know that we need you to volunteer. So this is time for offering. And as usual, for those who don't know, the offering buckets are already up here thanks to our ushers. So after I finish giving a testimony and then praying, then you'll be free to come up and give into the offering if you're giving physically by cash or a check. All right. So please be mindful of that. So here's a quick testimony that's good to hear. Leaders in the church assist their grandson in attending a Christian school by paying for his tuition. Because um, he is their grandson, they are not eligible for a parental discount. After fasting and praying and scraping, uh, scraping all that they could, making ends meet to cover their grandson's tuition, they determined that next year they would not apply for their grandson to return to the school, but look for other options. Then this happened. The principal of the school called and said that the Lord has been dealing with her about their grandson and offered them to return in the fall with a 50% discount. Yeah. Isn't that a blessing? 50% discount. What a discount. So they are convinced more than ever that their heavenly father will supply all of their needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus concerning them, according to Philippians 4.19. All right. So more than that, they believe that the Lord has opened a door of favor for them to continue to live out their faith and create an environment where their grandson can grow academically and thrive spiritually uh, until high school. So we thank God for that. So why would I bring up that testimony? Well, this testimony is part and parcel of the larger testimonies that we give about how God is moving here at Hope Christian Church. All right? God is moving in different ways. Uh, you may remember some months back, Apostle Jackson preached about promotions and blessings, and people started talking about promotions and blessings and all those things. So we are believing God according to the word that we hear that these things are going to happen. So they are experiencing the favor of God, the power of God, the presence of God and getting a great, great discount. So as, uh, at, as many of you know, at Hope Christian Church, we have the LifeNet small groups. We did the grocery giveaway at the beginning of the year, and, and we enable several national level ministries to do what they do because of the faithful gifts and donations that you gave here at Hope Christian Church. You sow into this ministry, and we invested in the souls, and we sow into other ministries as well. So we thank you so much for your giving. I always like to give according to the scripture. Matthew 6, 19 through 21, that says, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, or where thieves break it and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break it and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What does that mean? As I always like to say, how do you lay up rewards in heaven? By doing things on the earth that affect heaven. That's why we minister to marriages. That's why we launched a whole healing house to minister to people. That's why we're about souls, evangelism ministry. We tell us to be evangelistic. We have campaigns for the church to be evangelistic and to meet people and to be a light in a dark place. So we are doing great things here at Hope Christian Church. 
So let me pray over the offering. Father, we thank you for this time that finances will be given and sown. I thank you that these, these, these dollars shall represent souls, 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 souls. Not just bills being paid, Lord, and staff being paid, but souls, souls, souls. Marriages coming together. Marriages kept together. A place where the biblical worldview is, te- is taught properly, where the apostolic and the prophetic has a place, where the oracles of God come and speak, where the power and the presence of God is done decently and in order. So we thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So you are now allowed to come up to the front. Even as I'm speaking, you are now allowed to come up to the front and give into the offering baskets, if you will. So we have the buckets up here, and you should see the QR code on the screen behind me. If you would like to go ahead and use your smart device and go ahead and scan the QR code for finding out the ways that you can give. All right. And you can go to our website, thehopeconnection.org, to give the hopeconnection.org. Click on the icon at the upper uh, right-hand side of the screen that says give, and there's several ministries you could sow into. All right. If you have a check, you could uh, give it here and make it payable to Hope Christian Church, Hope Christian Church. If you have your cell phone, bring up your texting app, and you can text HCCGIVE to 77977. That's HCCGIVE to 77977. So we thank you so much for doing so. And we also encourage those who are watching us online and those who consistently watch us, please make sure you sow into the offering as well and support this ministry that is blessing you. All right? We thank you so much for that. But before I walk off, I would like to actually bring up a special announcement. All right, there's a special announcement. All right, a special announcement. Notice I said that three times. All right. I have a special announcement exclusively for our online audience. This is for the online audience. Hope has an online church survey that we would like you to fill out. All right, you should be seeing it in the chat right now, as a matter of fact. Again, this is for our Hope attendees who exclusively watch us online. The reason why I'm foot stomping this point, because we made sure we mentioned this last week, that is just for those who are watching us online, who are in other parts of Maryland or can't come here and don't come to the building. And of course, a Hope member who's always in the building filled it out. So exclusively for those online, please make sure that you fill out this survey. That would be wonderful. That would be great. All right? So without further ado, please pay attention to the screens for what's happening here at Hope. Hello, Hope. Here are your weekly announcements. Have you ever wondered if God desires to speak to you? Receive the answers for this and more at Prophetic Training Part 3, Ministering by Faith. On June the 2nd and 3rd, instruction materials and lunch are $37. Sign up to save your spot today. Send in place students, please register with your special link. Men, come out and join us for our Kingsmen Fellowship on Saturday, June the 10th at 10 a.m. Bring a friend. Are you ready to go higher? Surge 2023 service returns Sunday, July 30th at 6 p.m with special guest speaker, Apostle Sharon Parks. Ladies, join us for Coffee and Friends on Saturday, June the 17th for Father-Daughter Time and Bishop J. Allen Neal and our own Apostle Michelle. Fellowship begins at 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. The stream will begin. We invite you to join us in person and online. Then as we honor fathers on June 18th, Bishop J. Allen Neal will stay with us for our 10 a.m. service. We encourage you to not only invite and bring your fathers and father figures to service, but use this as an evangelistic opportunity to reach the people in your sphere of influence. River Conference 2024 registration is open. If you register before September 1st, 2023, you will receive a Release the River t-shirt as a gift while supplies last. Registration is $50. And just for today, Release the River t-shirts will be available for $25 at the bookstore. Get all your HCC info directly by downloading our church app. Just search Hope Christian Church MD. For all the events here at Hope, register at the church website, thehopeconnection.org. with us. <laughs> it's been unprecedented. It's been an awesome, awesome weekend. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our guest speaker today, who's a friend of the house. How many were here yesterday for the workshops? 
So I want to give a special thank you to Pastor Thelma, Elder Yvonne, Donna Mazik, and Seren Adams for helping us steward the afternoon and giving us some tools to practically walk in victory in our parenting, in our solic area, as well as in our uh, preparation for the future. So Dr. Sharon R. Nesbitt is simply a lover of God and a lover of people. While serving as a coveted spiritual leader, author, philanthropist, and humanitarian, Dr. Nesbitt has founded several works to include Dominion World Outreach Ministries located in Marion, Arkansas, Dominion World Development Corporation, and Dominion World Guatemala. Additionally, Dr. Nesbitt's entrepreneurial anointing has led and directed the acquisition, purchase, and development of land and facilities on behalf of the ministry. With, most recent, with the most recent purchase of 102 acres of land, this will house the new Dominion campus. These efforts, along with her um, integrity, unparalleled leadership, and decades of dedication to teaching spiritual truth has led to her being honored with, the, with several prestigious awards to include the Presidential Lifetime Achievement um, and Volunteer Service Award, as well as being appointed Goodwill Ambassador for the Golden Rule under the Interfaith Peace Building Initiative. Dr. Nesbitt's personal passion is to see people move beyond cultural and socioeconomic barriers and flow in their God-given purpose. Come on, she helps people steward breakthrough. As she travels domestically and internationally, ministering across racial and denominational boundaries, Dr. Nesbitt continues to sow seeds that will produce a harvest of transformation in generations to come. So she's got a new book out, Accessing Ancient Portals. And I have on good authority that Pastor Wilbert has made several copies available to women specifically who want a book but may not be able to afford a book today. So you can make your way, if you want to get a copy and wouldn't have bought one due to financial reasons, you can make your way to the bookstore and get a complimentary copy. So our worship team is going to lead us. If you'd please stand. And the next voice you'll hear after that is that of Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. Jesus has broken, Jesus broken the curse. And he has never. 
lift your hands if you know he's never lost a battle if you know he's never lost a battle if you know he has never lost a battle come on in and create you're right in the midst of a battle of battle right now and declare I'll never lose because he never lost a battle I'll never lose a battle Come on, shout it. And he never lost a battle. And he never lost a battle. And because he didn't lose, I won't lose. I am triumphant. I'm an overcomer. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. I have the mantle of a breakthrough. I am miraculous. I am anointed. I am anointed, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I never lose, I refuse to lose any battle in Jesus' name. Now give the Lord a shout. He never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. <laughs> he never lost a battle. And because he never lost a battle, you will never lose a battle. You've got to have a victorious mentality that I'll never lose. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what it feels like. I refuse to be defeated. I won't quit. And I'm not backing up. In Jesus' name, I refuse to be defeated. I won't quit, and I'm not backing up. In Jesus' name, can you give the Lord a shout? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! While you're standing, can you give this awesome apostle a God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Apostle Michelle, amen. The grace, the anointing, the power that is on her life, that God has given her the mandate, the mission, and the assignment for you. And we are eternally grateful for the life of sacrifice and dedication that she has given to the Lord and to his people. And we honor that. We honor all of the pastoral staff, amen, who has kept the church moving. Pastor Dave and all of the staff that are here and prophet. Amen, Ricardo, and all of you pastors, we salute you, and we thank God for all of you for sticking and staying. It's not easy transitioning pastors, especially 
the long tenure that Bishop Jackson had and then transferring it from male to female is quite challenging. And we honor the grace and the anointing that God has afforded this house to stay viable in the kingdom. Not a Jackson thing, it's a God thing. And if you can get that out your head, church is going to explode in a few more days. Are you hearing me? And um, so we so appreciate all of you. And to the membership who's, who's sticking and staying, amen. Um, because you know it's not a Jackson thing, it's a God thing. He just used that family to facilitate and uh, we thank all of you. Yeah, give yourselves a hand. Come on. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of our e-members that are here. Some of our e-members and some of our, our members are here. Amen. It's always an honor for uh, Overseer Anita to travel with me. Amen, my sister. And um, so we just bless God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your grace. We approach your throne with honor and awe. We thank you for your word that will have the preeminence right now, Father, that lives will be changed, transformed, healed, delivered, and set free. We thank you for the Holy Spirit will bring transformation, impact, revelation, and manifestation. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that will secure it. We thank you for the angels that will help bring it to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Something supernatural is going to happen for you now. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, something supernatural is going to happen for you now. The Bible says if you can decree a thing... It shall be established. So tell your neighbor, I am establishing a supernatural flow over your life right now. Let it be activated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I was so honored to come to your women's uh, conference, uh, the summit, amen, and uh, building spiritual atmospheres, uh, understanding how to dissect and discern where you are and who you are with and what they are carrying, and sometimes the atmosphere where you live, where you work, or who you connect to can stop or hinder you from doing what God has called you to. And so being able to discern spiritual atmospheres and building spiritual atmospheres that invite, welcome the penetrating power of the Almighty to come into your life and do supernatural things. Things just don't happen. We live this world, sarah, sarah, whatever be, will be, will be. No, things just don't happen. They are legislated. They are decreed. They are created. Uh, they are manifested. And things just don't happen. That's why the body of Christ has been lazy, because we just think God is just going to do certain things. It doesn't happen like that. All of my years of preaching, over 20-something years, 25 years of preaching, all my life in, in the gospel or in the ministry, well, we were born in the ministry, and um, um, things just don't happen. They have to be legislated. They have to be confessed. They have to be believed. They have to be forced into production. Things just don't happen, and the devil knows that Christians will become lazy and wait on God instead of forcefully creating, doing what they do, need to to make something happen 
He gives us the vehicle called faith. He gives us the vehicle called prayer and fasting and worship and praise, prophetic decrees, prophetic demonstrations, prophetic unctions. He's given us these tools to get through. And so thus, that's not my message, but we're moving into it. Amen. And um, so I, I really feel like as we're moving into the Feast of Pentecost and to the day of Pentecost, we've gone through Passover or resurrection, right? The death, burial, and resurrection. We thank God for that, but that is nothing without the ascension. For 40 days, he walked in the earth, and he ascended on the 40th day. So our church celebrated the ascension because without the ascension, his death is null and void. The ascension is where he is enthroned. The ascension is where he is coordinated. And the ascension is where he takes his rulership and reign. But greater than that in his ascension is when he ascended, we ascended. We are not trying to. When he got up, the Bible says we got up. <laughs> Glory to God. So we've already experienced a resurrection. Y'all pretty quiet in here. It's not going to happen. It's already happened. The Bible says when he was raised, we were raised. And the Bible says he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto what? Men. That means he led us captive or he, he released us from captivity and he gave us gifts called apostles, prophets, teachers, uh, evangelists. Come on. For the and pastors, for the what? For the perfecting of the saint, for the work of the ministry. And the Bible says he gave us gifts and he ascended on high. And the Bible says that when he ascended, we ascended. And then the Bible says in Ephesians 2 that when he took his seat, the Bible says God made us to sit in heavenly places. He didn't ask us. He didn't give us a choice. He made us to sit in heavenly places. So if somebody say take your seat in your heavenly place, they are correct because the Bible says he made, say he made me to sit. He made me to sit. Y'all looking a little funny. Can you put Ephesians 2 and 6 up there? This is not my message, but I'm looking at some wondering eyes and like, I, I don't know about all listeners because I think we got to die to get somewhere. No, you've already died. The Bible says it was pointed once unto man to die and then the judgment. When you get in Christ, the Bible says we die to the old things and new things are resurrected. Y'all hearing me? And have raised us up together. Ephesians 2, 6. Y'all see this? And has raised us up together and what? Let's read together. Made us to what? Sit. In heavenly places. Where? So wherever he is, positionally, that's where you are. Now you got to get your mind to get to compute that you are seated in heavenly places. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor, don't come down, don't come down, don't come down, don't come down. Hallelujah. So when we talk about atmosphere, we're going to get back to atmosphere. Because I, I, get the, I felt somebody shift to their heavenly place. I felt somebody come out of the, the confinement of the mindset that I'm nothing and nobody, that I've been elevated to the son of the almighty God. That as Jesus is coordinated and seated, we are seated in heavenly places. It is very hard for you to have that divinity mindset because we've been teaching we're nothing, we're nobody, we can't offend, we can't have the power, we can't do this, we can't do that. And um, that's why people are going to the other side is because they're hungry for the supernatural. And when it comes to the church, we're scared of the supernatural. God, why am I in this vein? <laughs> Jesus, help me. So, so yesterday we were talking about building a spiritual atmosphere around you that anything that comes against you, um, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Today I want to talk about building a habitation for Holy Spirit. 
building a habitation. We're on our way to Pentecost next week. It's Pentecost Sunday. It is the giving of the Holy Ghost. It is the outpouring of the Spirit of God. It is the birth of the church, but it is the habitation of the body of Christ. The Bible says when we look at the scriptures and look at the understanding of what God has called us to do, we move in the essence of who he is. Can we go to 1 Corinthians 3, 6? Now, I'm going to give you quite a few scriptures. Some I'm going to read and you can just put in your notes. We're going to be real teaching for the next 15, 20 minutes. And then we might preach out the rest of it. We'll see how the Holy Ghost will do it. Amen. But this is the season of the Holy Ghost. 40 days. Now we're in the 10 days. The 10 days of the upper room. So. So um, we celebrated Monday, and um, so we're in the 10 days of the upper room. If you've ever been to Israel, to Jerusalem, to the upper room, you have the sense that Jesus tells these 500 to go to the upper room. Only 120 goes to the upper room. Are you hearing me? And he says, wait till you be endued, Acts 1 and 8. He says, wait till you be endued with what? Power from on high. 316, 316, 1 Corinthians 316. Wait till you be endued with power from what? On high. Wait till you be in what? With what? That you may be witnesses unto me and to Jerusalem, to, to Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, the, 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 the defining measure... Of the Holy Ghost in your life is not speaking in tongues. It is power. Now, I know we talk about we got to get you to speak in tongues. And when you get to speak in tongues, we start speaking in tongues, but we have no power. He says, wait till you be in due with what? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That means when the Holy Ghost come, you should be in power to do some things. You should have some power in your life. Don't run around talking about speaking in tongues and you talking about you weak. Now, y'all know I'm very apostolic. So you that don't know me, just know I'm going to go off. All right. Because I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to the spirits that's holding you. So don't take it personal. I'm preaching at these things that keep people bound and keep them from going into the fullness of who they are. So if it seems like I'm a little aggressive, if it seems like I'm a little angry, I am. Because there's a spirit that is holding the body of Christ and we can't be free because we think of the limitations and restrictions that we put on ourselves. He says, whom the son of, the, of the, the truth will make you free, set you free, lead you into freedom. Are you hearing me? A and you're going to be free. He says, know ye not that you are the temple of God? That you are the temple of God, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. You are the what? Temple of God. And the spirit of God does what? Dwells where? That means you have a permanent guest in you. Now, re recently there were certain people that were coming over my house. And you know, uh, you shallow clean for your family. You just, you know, you straighten up a little bit for your family. Uh, and, you know, and, but when, when you have some real guests coming to your house, you go do a do deep cleaning, right? You make sure you get, uh, you know, wherever they're going to be. I don't know about you, but I make sure the baseboards are clean. I make sure, yeah, you know, there's no dust nowhere. You know. Y'all looking real funny this morning. I don't know if I, I'm in the right hope. Am I in the right, am I in the right hope this morning? And, and you go deep down and you start cleaning out stuff and you look under the bed. You make sure there's nothing under the bed. You, you, maybe y'all don't have no guests coming to your house. I don't, I don't know because y'all look. And, and, and you make sure that everything is tidy. Everything. Nothing you want to see. If you got wine bottles, you put them up. If you smoke marijuana, you put up the, the blunt. If you are doing something, you know, you're not supposed to do. Especially if they're Christian, you're going to make sure. I'm going somewhere. You're going to make sure you clean up. But I came to tell you that the Holy Ghost has come to live with you permanently. And you got to clean up. 
What if the Holy Ghost met you after church and say, I want to go home with you? How many of you would say, well, hold on. You would get on the phone and say, hey, sweetie, can you clean up? Can you, can you move some stuff around? The Holy Spirit is coming. Can you put that stuff up? Can you clean up the living room? Make sure everything is right. Can you do the Holy Spirit is coming home with me? Can you? We treat the Holy Spirit so casually. That we can do anything when we want to do, how we want to do. And he says, we are the temple. We are the house of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, no, just can you, I'll wait on you. Can you put that one up? Because it's important that you see this. He says, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. He says, what? He says, what? Uh, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? Which you have of God and you're not your own. Say I'm not my own. Not my body. Not my mind. Not my money. Not your ministry. Not your choice or your will to say no to God. When you invite the Holy Spirit in. Your answer to him is always yes. I meet people all the time and say, I know I have an anointing to preach, but I'm not going to preach. The Lord can tell me to do anything but preach. Who are you with your arrogant self? He gives you the breath to breathe, and you got the nerve to tell the one who keeps your oxygen connected, no, I'm not going to pray, I'm not going to fast, I'm not going to give, I'm not. The arrogance of the body of Christ, and we wonder why people are sick and dying and going to hell because you said no. I got a tag about a tail and I ain't going to let go because I feel like God is going to elevate this church to a level, but he needs some disciples who's going to say yes at the drop of the hat. He doesn't have to ring it out. Nobody has to prophesy to me. He can whisper in my ear and I'll do what he tells me to do because I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Say, I've been bought with a price. Say it loud. You're not your own. You don't get to tell God or leadership what you're not going to do. Because everybody want goosebumps. Everybody want the gifts of the spirit. Everybody want to pray in tongues. Everybody want to lay hands. But is he here? Is he in your house? Did he pack up and leave because you were arrogant? You were nasty. Y'all don't like this. I knew it wasn't. I knew it was just going to be me and the Holy Ghost today. I just knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God where? In your body and in your what? Spirit, which is what? <laughs> your body and your spirit, which is what? So you don't get to feed it when you want to. So when God tells you to fast, you can't say, God, no, they having lunch at work today. No, they, they, uh, they going to bring lunch today. I can't do that today. It's not your body. It's not your body. Because as we're elevating, as we're in this conscious awareness where apostle is changing the sound and changing all this, that the Holy Spirit can be moving on some people and you feel nothing because you have not invited them, you have not welcomed him, you have not engaged with Holy Spirit. You speak in a tongue, but you don't speak to him. You speak in a language, but you don't obey him. You speak. You sing and you dance, but you never engage the Holy Spirit. You use him like a pimp. I know, I know this was supposed to be a good sermon where you hang from the chandelier. And uh, uh, yeah, my soul, I hate to be the bearer of this message. Are you hearing me? Put this in your notes. The Holy Spirit speaks. Say he speaks. He speaks. 
He will speak to you. He will tell you things that are coming if you engage him. You got to get up like he's your best friend in the morning and say, good morning, Holy Spirit. What are we going to do today, Holy Spirit? What do I need to get rid of today? Who am I going to engage today? What's my posture today? I was a little arrogant and ignorant last night. I said it wrong to my husband or to my wife. I didn't speak well about my children. I know you were grieved. Are you hearing me? He speaks. Say he speaks. Put this in your notes. First uh, Timothy 4 and 1. He speaks. He gave directions to Philip in, in Acts 8, 29. I'm going to give you a whole lot of the Holy Spirit teaches. Say he teaches. John 14, 26. He says the Holy Spirit, the comforter whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. So if you're ignorant on something, say Holy Spirit, teach me. Teach me how to do this. Teach me how to say this. Teach me how to love. Teach me how to forgive. Teach me how to study the word. Teach me when my prayer time is. Teach me how to fast. Teach. I'm not saying this in disrespect to the Holy Spirit, but he's like your concierge service. Whatever you need, he's right there to do whatever you need. Y'all not hearing me. He's my best friend. The Holy Spirit is the sustainer of my life. But you can't treat the Holy Spirit so casual. Ruach HaKodesh. He's the third part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Father says, Jesus said, it is expedient that I go away. Come on, that the Holy Spirit will come. John 16, 7. He says, it's expedient, it's advantageous that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Ghost is not coming. Everybody say, I wish Jesus was here. No, I don't. Because if Jesus was here, he'd probably be in Jerusalem. And if I needed him, something to happen, it wouldn't happen because he couldn't be at three or four places at the same time. He says it's advantageous for the Holy Ghost to come. So the Holy Ghost, there is no distance in the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of Christ that's now on all of us. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Romans said, if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you he will quicken your mortal body oh hallelujah you can't have the Holy Ghost and live a common life no the Holy Ghost will tell you to do some crazy things he'll tell you to do some things no, he'll teach you and guide you into all things hallelujah he says he's going to teach me he said Holy Spirit teach me you got to ask, though. You don't want to ask because some of y'all don't want to hear what he had to say. You don't want to you don't want to teach you. You don't want to teach you because you're stuck in a rut and because you like being who you are. And the Holy Ghost always put pressure on you to change. You didn't, Sharon, you didn't say that right. You didn't do that right. Come on, go back. Make it right. Make it right. Why? Because I need a clean flow. The reason I do what the Holy Spirit tells me is because I need a clean flow. I need to do bush canal. You talk about rivers, you can dam up your rivers. Are you hearing me? So the Holy Spirit bears witness in John 15, 26. The Holy Spirit guides, hears, speaks. I'm hurrying because I got a few minutes. John, come on, John 16, 12 and 13. John 16, 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say to you, but you can't bear them. The Holy Ghost always want to talk, but you don't always want to listen. And, and so we put so much pressure on leadership. Tell me what to do. Tell me when to pray. Tell me when to fast. Well, I don't like the way they did that. I don't like the way. And you know, you haven't been in the presence because every little thing rubs you the wrong way. The person cuts you off in traffic. You have a conniption. Bum, bim, bim, bum, bum, bim, bim, bum, bum. Really? You know you haven't spent time in the present. And when you pass it, it's a little grandmother. Shame on you. 
Spirit curses on somebody because the Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. If I can't bless them, I'm definitely not going to say anything. And then what I put out because I sowed the seed, I'm going to get a harvest of it. So guess what? Two days later, you cut somebody off. They cursing you. I know. The Holy Spirit will forbade. He forbids. He stops you. He prevented Paul and his company from going to certain areas of Asia. He'll tell you, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't connect to that person. It's the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit does, he says, no. 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 Then he gets quiet. Because he's not going to war with you. And then you be wondering, I can't hear the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost not talking to you. Because at the last point you disobeyed him. What's the last place he got quiet? Come on, Hope. We're going somewhere. And everybody's got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Not just leadership. Not, not just the pastors, not just the elders, the, the prophets. Everybody got to hear the Holy Ghost. And when that happens, come on. We won't have room in here for the people who are coming because you'll begin to pray and fast and you'll do what the Holy Ghost tells you. It'll be electric. It'll be charged. The Holy Ghost intercedes through you. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26. The Bible says we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit make intercession for us. You know, the Holy Ghost is praying for your enemy. While you mad at him and trying to curse him out, while you praying, the Holy Ghost is interceding for your enemy because the Holy Ghost brought that situation to you for, not, for them not to be your enemy, for you to have compassion to pray for people. <laughs> Holy Ghost, I didn't know it was going to be this bad this morning. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I, are you hearing me? The Bible says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth what? Our infirmity. That word infirmity means weakness. He helps my what? Weakness. When I'm weak, I got to go to the Holy Ghost. Come on. I got to run into the presence of the Holy Ghost. Say, Holy Ghost, you know I'm struggling in this area. You got to help me. We don't like change, though. He says, we know not how we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself make what? Intercession with us groanings that what? Cannot be uttered. So you got to say, Holy Ghost, pray. You don't know how to pray for that child, Holy Ghost? Show me how to pray. Can you pray through me for Johnny? Can you pray through me for my husband? Or can you pray through me for my wife? Now I want to clarify, husband and wife, y'all understand born a man or born a woman. This is what I'm saying. I can't tell my, oh, you understand what I'm saying? Hmm. All right. The Holy Spirit possesses affection. The Bible says that the love of the Spirit is in me. The Holy Spirit will love you. Come here under high and now. See, the reason we get in trouble with God is because we love people more than we love God. And anytime you put people before God, He knocks down your idols. Men, women, you cannot love your spouse more than you love God. He's your first love. Because I can't love my spouse unless I know that the love of the Father is in me because only the Father can love him. <laughs> only the Father can love through me. Come on, y'all not hearing me. We have misplaced the order of love. It's God first, then your spouse, then your ch Are you hearing me? You can't love anybody. You can't love your children more than you love God because they will mock you. They will become your idol and they will come on down. They will break your heart until you put God first. You'll always try to manipulate, control your children to love you. But when you love God, God says the love of God has been shed in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will teach me how to love my child. The Holy Ghost will teach you how to love your spouse. The Holy Ghost will teach you how to love yourself. 
not here for goosebumps and tongues. The Holy Ghost is the here is here to show me how to live. Some of you need to repent because you put things before God. You put love before God. These are the things you know when the Holy Spirit is quiet, when the Holy Spirit is not moving on you, when the Holy Spirit, uh, when he's evasive, and when you, you know your attitudes start, your language is, he can be grieved. Say grieve. grieve. Ephesians 4. Can we put that one up there? Ephesians 4, verse 25. Ephesians 4, verse 25. You can grieve the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you can grieve him. You know, women, we got it bad. A little mouth. This is how we grieve him. He said, put away lying, <laughs> speaking every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members of what? One another. I can't lie on you because you are me. Yeah. We're in the same body. And what I lie on you about, come on, I curse my own body. Somebody going to get that in a minute. He said, we are one body. He said, put away lying. He says, be not angry. Verse 26, he said, be not angry and sin not. He said, be ye angry and sin not. There is an anger you can have and that won't cause you to sin. He said, but don't let the sun go down on that anger. Neither give place to the devil. He said, let him steal that stole, steal no more, but let you work with your hands. Stop stealing. That means your tithe. Work with your hands. <laughs> the thing which is good that he may give to him that is needed. Let no com corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. And guess what? There it goes. Next verse. And grieve not. He says, lying, stealing, being angry when the sun goes down. Are you hearing me? And letting corrupt communication come out of your mouth is grievous to the Holy Ghost. It grieves the Holy Ghost. Can we read the Bible? And, he, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you, all malice, and be kind one to one, and be kind, and be kind, and be kind, and be kind. I'm going to say it again. And be kind one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, Wow. We didn't teach that if I say something wrong, I grieve the Holy Ghost. If I lie, it's grievous to the Holy Ghost. If I steal, even if it's a pencil from your office. <laughs> you lie on your taxes. Just keep looking straight. Just keep looking straight. Just keep looking straight. You open doors for the enemy. The young lady, you saw the testimony. Young lady got offended at somebody, opened the door to the enemy, took her down a path. Why? Because it was grievous to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. He can be blasphemed when you're sitting up here saying, I don't believe that's the Holy Ghost. I don't think that's the Holy Ghost. Denying, see, blaspheming is denying the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says you can't be forgiven of that. So if you don't understand how somebody is worshiping, somebody else is praising, why apostle them is letting the worship go long? Uh, we over the time. Did they see the clock? It's a minus up there. Did they see we're going? It's two hours now, and we're still in worship. And you don't know what the Holy Ghost is doing because it may take two hours to lift depression off somebody. It may take another 30 minutes to get that. You don't 
don't know what the Holy Ghost is doing, it is the arrogance of the body of Christ to tell God what to do in a service. Next we got to have this, and next we got to have this. What's going to happen when she stand up and preach before the worship? What's going to happen if she said, we're just going to worship today? What's going to happen if she said, there's not going to be any worship, there's not going to be any praise, we're just going to pray on a Sunday morning. We're going to pray until something happens. We may be here four hours. We may be here five hours. But we're staying until the Holy Ghost do something. What's the arrogance of us to have service in an hour? You watch your TV longer than that. You look at Facebook longer than that. And then you wonder why your neighborhood is infested with drugs and, and perversion and why people are doing all kind of lustful things because the church is being entertained by the television. We'd rather have television than the altar. You don't have an altar at home. You won't come to the altar at church. You won't pray. You won't fast. When people are up here praying and fasting, some of y'all just sit down like, okay, we're waiting for the next. See, we've, we've conditioned. I like this service because they do this. They sing these songs. They sit down. We're out by the hour. We can bring our fate, our latte, our cappuccino in. We can do this. They don't have breakfast. They don't have this. What is this? What is this? People are dying and going to hell. And we want to bring entertainment in the church? We want to bring coffee in the church? We got to tell you to stand up in the church? You stand longer in the DVM line or whatever y'all call it up here. Y'all stand longer to get the license changed over. You stand. Tell you to stand up in the church. You can't stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying everything. That needs to be said, and I'm catching my plane and going home. And I ain't scared of none of you. How arrogant, how arrogant. I was talking to one of our mothers, my mother, my mother's, yeah. Y'all, this is real early on in the ministry. They know me now. Real early on in the ministry. And I said, Mama, we're going to kneel at the altar. She said, baby, I can't kneel. She said, I got arthritis in my knees. I got someone. And uh, so I, I just I went over. And I said, got my purse. I got me running around my purse. And I, said, I dropped $200 by her chair. <laughs> Mama got down. I say, stay right there until the Holy Ghost comes up on you. You'll get down for a dollar, but you won't get down for God. Something is wrong with your technology. You should have been saying, God, heal my arthritis. Right? I command every spirit of arthritis to leave my body. Y'all stop making excuses. You know, God know my heart. Yeah, he know you stubborn. He know you won't use your faith. He know. That's why everybody else be blessed around the church. You're like, when God going to bless me? When you stop being mean. When you stop talking about people. When you stop lying. When you stop. When you stop trying to judge leadership. When you stop it, you are grieving the Holy Ghost. You can insult the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 10, 26. Anytime you willfully sin, you keep sinning, saying, God, forgive me. The Bible says don't frustrate the, the, the spirit of grace. Don't frustrate the spirit of grace. How many times are you going to ask God to forgive you? And some of you do stuff and you don't, you don't even have a consciousness or the conviction to ask God to forgive you anymore. You become so arrogant. That once saved, always saved. <laughs> saved from what to what? 
What you saved from and what you saved to. You just saved going to heaven? I don't think so. He says, you are saved. You will be saved. He says, your spirit is saved. He says, but work out your soul salvation. That means your mind got to get saved. And your body will be saved when we get the glorified body. <laughs> he can be lied to. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? He can be lied. You know y'all lie. We can lie to the Holy Ghost. I'm putting myself in that, in this one. We can lie to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Acts 5, 3. Acts 5, 3. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? You was like, how did they lie to the Holy Ghost? They lied to the apostle. And the apostle said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Because true leadership is a representation of the Holy Spirit. And if you wouldn't engage in a fight with the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't engage in a fight with an apostle, a prophet, a teacher. I wouldn't engage in a fight. I wouldn't try to tell them you more an anointed than they are. I wouldn't engage in, I, 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 y'all, I know some of y'all got some DDDs and some DDCs and all these things behind your name. And you're a little educated and you think you know a little something. But you better become dumb when it comes to spiritual things. Look what it says. And Peter said to Ananias, why have Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back some money? <laughs> they say, pay your tithes, give your offerings. You're like, uh -huh. you think we care? <laughs> we don't know what God has blessed you with. We don't know. We give you the opportunity to be honest with God. You're going to lie to us. Is it quiet because y'all convicted or is it quiet because y'all already mad at me? <laughs> That's why I'm showing you straight scripture. This is not according to Sharon because Sharon has to abide by it too. Man, I get whipped quicker than all of y'all. Mm. 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 I recently, I got, a, I got a check, and it's a very nice check, and um, you was like do 20% of everything I give in. And so well, with this one, uh, Apostle, I was like, Lord, I'm just going to do 10%. You said, Ty, you know how we try to get out of stuff, you know. Um, <laughs> when it's a, an amount we okay with, we, um, <laughs> we be like, <laughs> God bless me. <laughs> I got a blessing. But when it is a mountain you kind of struggle with, you be like, huh? You, you said 10%. So, you know, I'm finna come into an Ananias Sapphira situation. And uh, I had to check myself. And uh, I said, woman, well, you give him 10%. He's like, really? He said, you gonna give 10%? I said, yeah, you know. Malachi. <laughs> Malachi said, he, he said, uh, Holy Ghost said, you, you serious? I said, well, when he said, you serious? I said, well, now, nah, let's talk. Because <laughs> I've been broke. I've been broke than the Ten Commandments. I couldn't pay attention. I've been broke. I got a few coins. I don't ever want to be broke again. And so I know because there are spiritual laws that can take me back there, I'll never violate that law. Oh, y'all are quiet in here. You violate a spiritual law and it takes you back there. And I said, well, Holy Ghost, let's, let's negotiate. What can we do? He said, well, the best you can do is 20. And then the, the, the greater part that you can do, you can go 30. I'm trying to say maybe 12, 15, 18%. Y'all not hearing me. I'm trying to get you to understand that the, we can lie to the Holy Ghost on little simple things. And we insult the Holy Spirit. And we lie to the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Ghost, look, let, let, me, let me digress. Whatever you want to take out of this, you can have it. You've been too good to me. For a few nickels? No, no. Maybe, maybe when he talk about a billion dollars, then we got to talk again. But, you know, when anything less than that, it's a few nickels. Y'all not hearing me.
Come on, y'all act like you want the Holy Ghost to talk to you about your finances. Because your finances is the first place you lie to the Holy Ghost. We're on our way to Pentecost. Come on, we got to get rid of this stuff so we can have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing me? I said so we can have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. So you can lie to him. You can grieve him. You can insult him. Mm. <laughs> you can resist him. Have you, have you ever been in a service and the Holy Ghost said, get up. And you be like, somebody said over here, uh-uh. I don't feel like it today. You feel that nudge like something was up. Just go. Just get up. You can resist the Holy Spirit. You can resist the Holy Spirit. They tell you to lift your hands, and guess what? You feel you feel the freedom, and you won't even lift your hands. They tell you come to the altar. You be like, I'm not going to no altar. I'm gonna stay right here. I ain't into all of that. That ain't my thing. What is your thing? Slothful, lazy, ungrateful, unthankful. Man, when they say you can come to the altar, we're like, if I don't do nothing but do this. I obeyed. Same people running around the church all the time. Man. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going. Y'all sitting in the same seat, in the same section, around the same people, doing the same thing, resisting the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit wake you up in the morning. It's not a pee break. You don't have to go to the restroom. Come on. He taps you on the shoulder, wakes you up, and you don't have to go to the restroom. And he was like, can you spend some time with me? And you'd be like, I'm going back to sleep. I don't know what this is about. You get spiritual dumb in the middle of the night when the Holy Ghost want to spend some time, just like your husband or your wife want to spend time. The Holy Spirit wants to be intimate with you. Ah, e in the privacy of your own home, not in in church not around your prayer partner the Holy Ghost want to sing with you dance with you pray with you love on you the Holy Ghost loves intimacy think your spouse is like we just going we're gonna say we love each other in public and do nothing in private I'm only gonna pray in tongues at church that's how the pastor got in trouble Because we don't think we have to engage. My first love is the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, the Holy Ghost will teach you how to make love to your wife. Y'all don't like that. Let me run. The Holy Ghost will make you, teach you how to honor, respect your wife. Thank you. I got one man. One man said, because the rest of y'all scared. Come on, y'all. All the men should have said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Go and pray. Go and pray, honey. Go and get in your prayer closet. I'll pray with you. Come on, y'all want to pray? Let's pray. <laughs> so he can be resisted. He can be lied to. He can be insulted. He can be blasphemed. He can be grieved. You know that you got issues with the Holy Ghost when you are indifferent and cold when things don't prick your spirit anymore. When you have no reverential fear for God that you don't ever pick up his word and read his word. When you can watch TV for three hours and never say anything to God. When you're more enamored by what's going on in social media, TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. But you develop no real relationship with the Holy Ghost. We're on our way to Pentecost. This is an amazing church. But we got to get some things right. I wrestle with the Holy Ghost this morning. I've got a sermon about the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost in power. Holy Ghost in promise. Holy Ghost in perfection. I was ready to preach it. We were going to sing. We were going to hang from the cameras. <laughs> we were going to be running around. We were going to be jumping and shouting. And the Holy Ghost like, that's not the message. It's like, man. He was like, tell them 
what will make me depart? It's like, God, I don't want to be the one to have to preach this kind of message. <laughs> but because he know I'm going to obey him. What you think about it to me doesn't matter if it blesses one person. If it hits the heart of one person. If one person says, I've got to get it right with the Holy Ghost. Not just for ministry, for life. I don't want to get to heaven and God says, I don't know you. The way we get to know God is through the Holy Ghost and through his word. And the more I engage him, I engage God. He is God. And the Holy Ghost wants to do amazing things through you. And then you start teaching it to your children. So at an early age, they know that they can grieve the Holy Ghost. They can lie to the Holy Ghost. They can insult the Holy Ghost. And there are certain things that they just won't do. Because we need a reverential fear of God in our children. And if they see you don't fear God, they won't fear God. If there is no parameters on your life and on your mouth and on your thoughts, they'll do the same thing you're doing. They don't do as I say they do as you do and they are watching you and when you're nasty and when you're angry and when you have evil communication coming out of your mouth when you're talking about folk they're gonna emulate everything you do but if you're on your knees if you're praying if you're speaking in tongues if you're decreeing things over the house something supernatural will start happening My little three-year-old granddaughter, she always say, Gigi, I want to go to church. We're going to church, but not today. Every day she asks me, can we go to church today? I say, no, we're going to make a church right here. And so in my bedroom, I have a closet and all that, and then we're going to make a bedroom. So she said, we're going to church in there? Because they do as you do, not as you say. And so I'm in there praying. She said, Gigi, I don't know what you're saying. I said, I don't know either. <laughs> she said, who got your mouth? I said, the Holy Ghost got my mouth. She said, can the Holy Ghost get my mouth? I said, yes, the Holy Ghost can get your mouth. Because if you can teach them Beyonce, if you can teach them Lil Wayne, if you can teach them Kanye, if you can teach them how to jerk and jerk, you can teach them the Holy Ghost. I said, you can teach them the Holy Ghost. If they can play a 360 for four hours or play a PlayStation for five hours, you can teach them how to get in the Word at least 30 minutes. You can't play it until you tell me some scriptures. You can't play it until you... You tell me what God said. You can teach them how to hear the Holy Ghost. We got to raise the generation. But we got to be the remnant that God is calling. Hope y'all know I love you. <laughs> Sometimes God will send voices in so the pastor can't, won't have to do this. So y'all won't have an open indictment against you because you get mad at leadership because the leadership challenged you to clean up things in your life. Y'all not hearing me. Sometime God allowed the leader to be mute so other voices can come in, not knowing what's going on in the ministry and totally come in prophetically and dissect what's going on. Though you're making great strides and you're doing great things, Holy Spirit wants an in-depth relationship with you. Not just for church, but for life. But for life. But for life. And he's calling you to a personal relationship with him. Come on, play with my musicians. Come on, play. They're call he's calling you to a different kind of life. The Bible says we are peculiar. We're unique. We're, we're special people. Y'all smile or something because y'all making the sister feel real different right up through here. <laughs> Apostle and the team and the leadership are praying for revival, that this be a revival house. The people that God wants to bring through here, there are not enough seats.
And so that means some of you are going to be in the, in the gallery, in the, in the lobby, and on the parking lot praying for people. That means people can't get in the parking lot because there are going to be so many cars. And some of you are going to be lined up on the sidewalk before you get to the church. And they're going to be drive-by prayers that people can't get on the parking lot, but you're going to be stationed down the side line, uh, sidewalk, and you're going to be praying for people. And the police is going to try to stop it, but it can't stop it because it's going to be a move of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost not just moving through the apostles, through the prophets, but the Holy Ghost moving through all of you that you're stationed, that you've had enough church that on Sunday morning, if you never make it to the sanctuary, that a thousand people stand in here, show up, and you have to sit in the calf and in the chapel, or you have to stand outside while you're praying for people. It's okay because you had enough sermons for the rest of your life, and God is trying to prepare this house for a national revival, and you're going to have to get ready to, to sustain the revival. When the revival comes, it is the people's revival. Are you hearing me? And all of you are going to have to be commissioned to work in the church. You're going to have to do things to volunteer in the church. We had a 90-day revival but killed our people because we didn't have the spiritual stamina to do it. As much as I preach on it, the weight of the Holy Ghost that was in our church drained the people. We weren't prepared beyond 90 days. God won't give you what you ask for. He gives you what you're prepared for. And we're asking for a revival. But are you prepared for it? Oh, it would be nice to come in and see legs grow and see eyes open. But who's going to tend to the parking lot? And who's going to usher the people in? And who's going to pray for the people? And who's going to come and stay and clean up if the, if the team can't clean up? And who's going to be at the altar? And who's going to be here praying and, and, and forcing this thing in the spirit? You got to know what you're praying for. You got to be prepared for it. That if God said be back here tonight at 6, we're coming. Then if he say tomorrow, we're in an open revival, be back at tomorrow at 7. And then he'll say 7, it's Tuesday night. And, and the woman of God will get up and say, we're back here Wednesday. And you won't say, well, I got a job. She ain't got no job. Y'all act like we don't work. And then if you say Thursday, I feel a little anointing for, the, for us to be here Thursday. You're like, do she know what area I live in? Does she know I got a job? She know? And then Friday, we'll be right back here and Saturday. What if a five-day or a seven-day revival would just take off right now? Are we prepared? Who's going to come? I saw y'all jumping and dancing and shouting. You're like, you're like, you're like, but what if God said, I need you back here at 6 tonight to pray to midnight? How many of you will show up? No, 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 no. I'm just saying in your heart of hearts, how many of you would be here? And then she said, okay, the Lord says we're going to have a seven-day revival. Ooh. No, come on, y'all. We got we to gotta be prepared. She's talking about this house is a house of revival. This house is a house of sound. What did she say? The worship's going to go for four hours. Before anybody takes the mic, the worship's just going to go for four hours. What kind of revival do you want? Or do you just use words to look cute? The word of the Lord says this house is going to be a house of revival. The, the word of the Lord says this is a house of miracles. This is a house of signs and wonders. This is the house that will invoke, and, and vo invoke the nations to come to the fire of God. This is the river of God. Can we maintain it? Can we maintain it? Everybody, every speaker come in and say how wonderful this house is, how great is this house. You know you're great. Okay, we know that. Now prepare us. Give us the capacity, the strength, and the stamina to hold what you want to do in hope. And if you're always needy, you're feeling somebody's place. 
You should say, hope, bless my life. I'm going to move out of my spot. Let somebody else occupy that spot now. That I'm, I'm free. I'm healed. I'm going to start praying for somebody. I'm going to invite people. I, every Sunday, I'm going to invite somebody to come. I'm going to make sure that I be an evangelist and I invite. What kind of church is this? In your heart of hearts. Y'all don't slay the messenger. The Bible says he chasing those that he loved. I would hate to go to a church. God never gave us a chastening message. Because that means he didn't love them. And it's not a message to make you feel bad. It's a message to say, hey, God, I just got to get in alignment. Got some things out of alignment. I got I to gotta get in alignment. I'm not talking about deacon so-and-so or prophet so-and-so. I'm talking about me. If that's you, I need you to get to this altar real quick. If you feel like you and the Holy Ghost is good, then you stay right there. If you feel like this message went for you, you can stand, you can kneel. Very sobering message this morning. Why don't you pray in tongues to everybody get here? Just open your heart and your spirit to the Holy Spirit. Even if you can't get up here, just stand. You say, this is not my church, but I feel like God is speaking to me. Holy Spirit, you gave me this message. You knew who would be at this altar. We ask you to forgive us where we've ignored you, where we've disobeyed you, where we've insulted you, we've lied and grieved you, where we've blasphemed against you, we denied you, the very intimacy that you desired in and through us. Forgive us. Forgive us for having lip service and not heart service. Forgive us for walking in arrogance and ignorance and disobedience. Forgive us. When we turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to you. Wash us from all uncleanliness and all filth that will keep you from operating on the inside of us. When we misuse you, abuse you. When we've had com evil communication come out of our mouth where We've stolen, lied, and was angry without a cause, and in bitterness and unforgiveness and hatred. Where we judge things before their time. Father, by your spirit, we ask you to forgive us. You said you would. You said if we confess that you would forgive us and clean us from all unrighteousness. And Father, we stand at the altar of mercy and grace. And we ask you to forgive us corporately and individually. In the name of Jesus, we know you have marked this house for revival. We know you have marked this house for international fire. We know that angels will transverse here. We know that the sick will be healed here. But Father, we thank you that you're raising a corporate army. Come on, cry it out loud. A corporate army that are filled with the Holy Ghost, that will walk in power, will walk in authority, that your grace and your mercy will rest upon them today in the name of Jesus. Do something that has never been done in this region. Raise up a mighty army in this region that will carry the technology of power with signs, 
wonders and miracles, with the gifts of healing, with the working of miracles, with tongues and interpretation of tongues, with prophecy, with discerning of spirits, with the word of wisdom, with the word of knowledge that will raise the dead, that will cause resurrection. Father, we thank you even now that you're preparing this people for revival that has never been experienced in this nation's capital in the name of Jesus that the region will know that hope has come alive in the spirit because things are moving in each one of them father we thank you for an activation now we thank you for the impartation now we thank you that the river is flowing we thank you that the Holy Spirit is welcome we thank you that the Holy Spirit will fill them to the fullest we thank you that their eye gate ear gate and their mouth gate is open we thank you that the penetrating power of the Holy Spirit will rest upon them for supernatural acts in the name of Jesus you said in these signs shall follow them that believe in my name hope will cast out devils hope will speak with new tongues hope will cause anything deadly to be reversed in the name of Jesus hallelujah pray for the next 30 seconds your life depends on it pray pray Come on, come on, come on. I feel relief. I feel breakthrough. I feel Holy Spirit. I know you're not survived. Come on, come on, stir up your gift. Stir it up, stir it up. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Repent for saying no. Repent for saying wait. Repent, repent. Oh, yeah, I'll be the one, Holy Ghost. Shout, I'll be the one. I'll be the one you can use. I'll be the one you can pray through. I'll be the one you can love through. I'll be the one you can heal through. I'll be the one you can deliver through. I'll be the one you can encourage somebody through. I'll be the one. Here am I, Here am I, here am I, here am I. Here am I, here am I, here am I. Here am I. Father, we thank you. You're forgiven. You're healing. And you're making this ministry right for a revival with spiritual capacity and stamina to do all that you call them to do in the earth. That the mighty wind of the Ruach of the Almighty will begin to blow in this house. Samangana in a greater dimension in a greater power let the elevating graces of the almighty rest powerfully in this house in Jesus mighty name can you give the Lord a shout shout like you know he's forgiven you shout like you want the Holy Ghost to come again Shout like you know. It's welcoming you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Lord is faithful. That God is raising a remnant of people who are filled with the Holy Ghost. That will carry the technologies of the spirit realm. That it won't wear out leadership when the revival comes. But you're all equipped to carry now the weight and the mantle of what God will do in this house. It is the honor and the privilege of the Father to give you the grace. Do you know how many churches want what God is doing in this house? God has graced you. So let the wind blow. Hallelujah. Where are my singers? Just, just for a few minutes. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place. Feel the atmosphere. Come on, just tell him he's welcome. He's welcome. He's welcome. He's welcome in you. Not just, just not in this. Spirit, you are I love you, Hope. Hey. Come on, sing it, everybody. release it tomorrow which on yesterday I heard the word for apostle and he said release it when the congregation is here as a mighty sign of what's about to take place in this house if you're uncomfortable being uncomfortable this is not the house for you because the wind of the Holy Spirit is about to blow and everything is going to be turned right side up. And you're gonna see sustained prolonged bouts of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody come and stand behind him because I feel a wind right here. And as I was flying in and coming in, the Lord began to speak to me about the foundation of this house and how Bishop talked about the prophetic and how the wind of the Holy Ghost would blow. And this is the remnant that God will use in 23, which is five, which means grace that he's bringing in this house. And he says, you have come to a measure of rank in the spirit now where principalities and powers recognize who you are and the fight has been intense but the Lord says the breakthrough anointing is upon you and breakthrough is in the house and 
one of your mantles is a breakthrough mantle. And when people come in this house, they will feel a breakthrough. It was one of your prayer agendas. It was one of the things you were praying that God would put a breakthrough anointing upon this house. That when people come in here, breakthrough would come upon them. And they will be loose from the bound to bunkule benginda, bingani mango la mantaki and de makata. And as your father fought for gender rights, for holiness, the Lord says what he fought for, you got deliverance for. And you're going to see a lot of people come in and get delivered and healed. From lesbianism, from homosexuality, from transgenderism, this will be the house of healing. What your father fought for, the anointing is on you to deliver the people and all the hell that your mother and father went through. It's upon this house. It's upon you. In the name of Jesus. Now there's another grace for media and TV. It's already been decreed. But you're stepping in infant stages. And God is about to catapult in this next season. And you said, Lord, what about, what about budget? How are we going to do this? And the Lord says, I've already taken care of that. He's already ordained three people in the congregation that has money saved up to sow into that ministry in the name of Jesus. That, that the portal your father opened will not be closed. was put on pause but never to be closed and God is going to send men and women who just fund the media ministry to get your image and your likeness out y'all didn't hear that and I hear the Lord says what you've sown in tears you're going to reap you're going to reap the tears, the heartache, the pain, the uncomfortableness. God is bringing you to a place where you rule and reign. Now, I know everybody's running around talking about De Deborah's anointing and Esther's anointing and Ruth anointing. But there's a there's an anointing that's going to rest on your pastor, your apostle that Deborah didn't have. That Esther didn't have. There's a grace for this generation and a grace for the technologies that are being released in the earth. And so today, let's let the angels that will carry the mantle that Father has reserved for you be present now in the name of Jesus. Now, come, come take this out of her hand because God is going to drop something in her hand. Lift your hands. There's a mantle today. There's a mantle today. So Holy Spirit, as you commission this new grace upon her life, we thank you for the new mantle that will fall upon her and equipping to do what you call her to do. That this portion of the ministry would be so easy so easy in the name of Jesus so let the fresh wind of the Holy Ghost 
flow. Ora makasa ta ka ta 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 ko da makata. Shama na na. Shama na 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 na. Alaba mama. Oya na seba yeba. It's a new anointing. It's a new anointing on you. Whenever God does something for the leader, he'll do it for the people. I tell you, he'll do it for the people. What he's doing for her, 